So good morning. I'm Judy Hatfield, and I'm Vice Chair of Military and Aerospace for the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, and I'm also the founding principal of Equity Commercial Realty. You know, I'm somewhat of a health nut myself, so this is a, a topic that's really near and dear to me and delighted to have the opportunity to participate in this morning. Uh, we're pleased to be joined uh, to learn how the Oklahoma City County Wellness Score is used to measure our progress towards better health as a community. So today's event would not be possible, though, if we didn't have phenomenal sponsors. And our signature sponsor today is Metro Technology Centers. So if you guys will please help me welcome, Carla Graham is the director of Metro Tech Centers, downtown business campus. Come on up, Carla. Thank you, Judy. On behalf of Metro Technology Centers and our downtown business campus, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for attending today. We're always happy to support the chamber, particularly through these forums that are occurring throughout the fall, because they're structured to help us all be better informed about current issues so that we can stay involved as leaders. And we all know that's really important. And of course, because our downtown campus is about innovative training and affordable pro professional development, all geared to help you maintain a highly skilled workforce. Any issue that significantly impacts business costs, like the topic today that we're going to hear about related to health care, or one that impacts your talent development needs, obviously those are of, of importance to us. So thank you to the Chamber for allowing us to be a sponsor and putting this event on. We're happy to be the signature sponsor and look forward to getting to know all of you and serving you through our training needs. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. You know, economic development, improved educational outcomes, better public safety, these are all priority areas that are tied directly to the health of a community. A healthy city is a more livable city, and a livable city is a more healthy city, and I think a lot more fun city because people can get around and do things. From public projects like the MAPS Senior Health and Wellness Centers to private companies investing in health programs for their employees, Oklahoma City is healthier than we've ever been, certainly more so than a decade ago, and I'm sure many of you all remember when Mayor Mick Cornett put us all on a diet, and that got national, international news. So we're happy to say that all of us are probably a couple of pounds lighter these days, and I think that falls right in line with our topic uh, for today's event. There's still more work to be done, however, and we increasingly see the direct correlation between health and educational outcomes in our schools. Business and insurance costs rise when work, workers experience high levels of preventable disease. Today we're going to explore the efforts multiple partners are leading toward impacting better health outcomes across Oklahoma City. So please enjoy your lunch. I can tell you're already salivating over those desserts. And we're going to regroup shortly and introduce our fabulous featured speakers. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I would like to uh, let you know that we uh, are joined today by just an amazing group of partners that are working to create a culture of health across our community. One of the tools they use to evaluate the health of our community is the Oklahoma County Wellness Score. So the score helps our public health organizations and their partners impact existing challenges, identify opportunities for improvement, and drive new programming around a host of areas related to the health of citizens across Oklahoma City. Now, I want to give you guys an idea what this looks like. So I want you to have an appreciation today as these speakers are up here so that you can see what was compiled to make this uh, really meaningful for our community. A lot of work went into it, a lot of passion. So as you see everyone answering questions and hearing uh, 
them talk about it, you'll know it is a huge undertaking. So we're very appreciative of all the effort and passion that went into it. So let's take a moment to learn more about the score. I think we have a video that the we're going to take a look at. The purpose of the wellness score is to provide an overall summary of community health status. This information represents the foundation of planning and program development for improving health outcomes for our community. The Oklahoma City County Health Department consulted with several agencies in Oklahoma County to obtain zip code level data that includes both determinants and outcomes of health and wellness for our community residents. The death rates for Oklahoma City County decreased by 4.1 percent, equal to 368 deaths prevented or five school buses full of people. Cardiovascular disease mortality decreased by more than 5 percent and prevented 142 deaths. This is the number of people it takes to fill the length of a football field. We also saw decreases in stroke, cancer, and infant mortality rates. The Health Index ranks zip codes from lowest to highest risk of health burden. Most of the higher risk zip codes are in South Oklahoma City, and we are constructing a new health and wellness campus with effective programs to address the poor health outcomes. Through the hard work of community health programs and partnerships, OKC residents are realizing an increased quality of life. Oklahoma City County is making an impact through partnerships. Working with first responders, our hospitals, schools, elected leaders, community foundations and stakeholders, we've become a more vibrant community. OKC has seen an amazing increase in bike and walking trails, totaling 80 miles along with multiple miles of new sidewalk. With efforts led by public health partners, we are witnessing the power of integrating many traditional and non-traditional health services to work collaboratively. A fun way to promote active transportation is open streets. It's held twice a year, and we've seen more than 50,000 people in attendance in both north and south areas of OKC. While we are excited to celebrate the successes in this updated report, we are also aware that our state continues to be outperformed nationally in health improvement. And as the largest metropolitan health department in Oklahoma, we take our role in reversing those trends seriously. Oklahoma City County still falls short nationally in overall health rankings, with the average life expectancy of OKC County falling four years behind the national average. Many opportunities exist to continue to improve, like addressing the opioid epidemic, expanding projects and partnerships with schools, and continuing to expand the model of integration that has seen so much success at the current Northeast Regional Health and Wellness Campus. The clinic saw more than 36,000 visitors in 2016 and is recognized for its unique amenities. For more information, visit us at facebook.com slash OCCHD. Well, now we get to start uh, to introduce you all to the panelists that are going to be in our program today. So there were uh, really nice bios that were uh, in your program, and I think you actually have that in front of you so that you can, can know them in more detail. But let's start with Gary Cox. I believe his, uh, yep, there he is right there. He's the Executive Director of Oklahoma City County Health Department. Gary, if you'll join me up on the podium, please. Appreciate that. Next, we'd like to welcome Steve Hill, and Steve is the Chief of Staff for Mayor David Holt. That was a not, just a big old jump up there. I like that. Okay, Mary, you don't need to do that big jump. But our next one is Mary Malone, who is president and CEO of the Foundation for the Oklahoma City Public Schools. Down here. Down here. <laughs> yeah, right down here. Here you go. Get me out. Grab on that. It's, it's tight squeeze. Thank you all for being here. And I'm going to just come around with some questions. So you all may be seated. And I will join you there in these comfy chairs. A lot, and we kind of all match them. Okay, this is good. We may not be able to get out of them. This is really, really nice. Okay, so uh, what we're going to be doing today actually is having some questions that our panelists are going to answer. And then we're going to open it up for Q&A. Uh, uh, in respect of your time, we're going to make sure that we've got all of you out of here uh, by 1 o'clock. So if there's some burning question, make sure you get your hand up in time for the answer to come prior to 1 o'clock. So uh, Gary, since you may be actually the, the most uh, 
educated on all of this with the position that you hold in, um, in our community. Could you just give us a quick picture of the current status of health across the city county area and just kind of tell us how are we doing? We got a little snippet, but if you can kind of fill in the gaps for us just a little bit, I know everyone would, would enjoy that. Well, thank you and good afternoon to everybody and thank you for the opportunity to come and share some information with you about some exciting things that are going on here in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma County. Um, and you had a really good overview in the video uh, of, of what this wellness score is and what it means. And as Judy said, it's a huge undertaking and a huge document here. But this is just not a document that you take and put on the shelf. It's a document that you, we actually use in the community and at the health department to prioritize and place our services uh, to keep our, our city and our county healthy. And you know, really, the, the news overall uh, for Oklahoma City and Oklahoma County is good. Uh, it's mostly good. We have a couple of challenges that, that we'll, we'll talk about, but if, you know, we'll just kind of drill down a little bit. <clears throat> it, our cardiovascular disease uh, fell 5%. Stroke mortality down 14%. Um, heart disease mortality down 3.5%. Uh, all cancer deaths down 7% and I could go on and on. So this is kind of a report card and you probably can't see it from here, but the arrows, the green arrows means we're making progress. And I think they've got that in their packet. Do you have yeah, that in your yep, packet? You so you can see that. Now, what are the challenges? The challenges, we do have a couple. And the big one that we saw was unintentional deaths. And when we drill down on that, what we find is it relates to drug overdoses. And if we drill down even further than that, you'll see that it's opioids. And so that's why, as a community, we're really looking at criminal justice reform. We're looking at other issues where we can try to impact that and turn it around. So we actually use this data in a, in a, a real situation where we can come together as a community and try to have community interventions and efforts to improve things and make them better. And so, you know, I'll d just give you another quick example. What we try to do a lot of times, we think we can make the biggest differences on improving health in our community if we focused on things that are the biggest killers. So what are the biggest killers in Oklahoma City? Uh, that'd be cardiovascular disease, heart disease. And so who are the folks that are, are dying from that? I mean, all across the spectrum. But what we find is there are certain high risk individuals in, within our communities uh, that we really could specialize and give them some extra health. So we have a program called My Heart. And so it's a voluntary program, but we, we en enroll, and we've enrolled thousands of people now in that program to do not only the medicine, uh, whether it's the drugs that they need, you know, the statins or the, or, or the blood pressure or cholesterol medicine or whatever, uh, and the medical care, but also the preventive care to help them stop smoking, to help them go through our wellness classes where they can have, uh, get information on how they can improve their health. And so we've had some really good results from that program. It saved a lot of lives, and I think that's one of the reasons that we've seen some of these numbers uh, improve. Example, 23% uh, of, the, of the, the population in the My Heart uh, we've had a 23% reduction in tobacco use, 37% decrease in uh, emergency room utilization, which is, is a, a really significant thing because it's not only saving lives in healthcare costs, uh, but it saves the, the hospitals and the ratepayers and taxpayers a lot of money along the line too. And we've seen in that group a 28% increase in physical activity. So we really are seeing some positive movement. Uh, we're seeing some great work. And this is just not work of the health department. It's work of the entire community, the hospitals, the physicians, the healthcare providers, the community partners, the foundations, and a lot of folks that are focused in on these problems. So Gary, thank you so much. Uh, you know, this really goes in tandem with uh, education because what we're here for today is to be educated so that we can all be better citizens and take advantage of some of these wonderful programs that exist of which we're not aware. So uh, my next question is going to be for Mary. And Mary, where do you see the highest need for education and how does this link to health 
which we know links to businesses. Well, I'll start by saying that a, a, something that we don't think of very often, but it's important for everyone to know that we are the only state in the country without mandated health education measures. So we are, we are educating our children without forcing them to take health education. And that, in my view, is a real problem and something that we all need to step up and agree that we need to, to make sure that our, our schools are pushing health education. But from my perspective also, since I focus on Oklahoma City Public Schools, that's where my real frame of reference is. Oklahoma City Public Schools is the state's largest school district, 46,000 students, 90% of our students live in poverty. So you will see it when the breakout is done on, on all of the data relating to health edge outcomes and educational outcomes that it really does depend on the zip code you live in as to where your health outcomes are and where your educational outcomes are. And this, in, in I'm sure everyone will agree, is not acceptable. It should not matter where you're born. Um, whether you have access to health care and whether you have access to good education. But the link between education and health and wellness is clear as well. The higher the educational attainment that a person receives, the higher their health outcomes are going to be. So it's very tied together. I, I don't want to paint the picture that no one's getting an education in Oklahoma City Public Schools because that's absolutely not the truth. But I think the, thing, the important thing to remember is it is an urban, high poverty district. And our kids are coming to school with, with trauma and with a lot of issues um, with, without having access to healthy meals until they get to school. Um, and that does make a huge difference in their abilities to learn. We have a school board member, Carrie Jacobs, is here today. Nice to see you. Um, Great, Mary. Mary, thank you so much. Okay, Steve, you're up on the third one. We, we mentioned just a little bit about the, uh, the MAPS-3 Senior Health and Wellness Centers improving community health outcomes, and everybody's interested in that, and some of us who maybe are those in that senior category. Uh, but what can you tell us also about the planned fourth location? Where is it going to be and where are we going to get to look forward to uh, seeing that? I hope you just happen to have that in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually don't know the answer to that. We have a, ah. And I have a city councilman sitting in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Larry will help you. <laughs> I'd like to know. Um, so one is open, and I can tell you that the one in northwest Oklahoma City, when it opened, uh, it was frequently cited that we'd hope to have 2,000 2,500 um, members up there. We kind of thought if we had 2,000 or 1,500, we'd be pretty happy with that result. As it turns out, we have almost 4,000 members in that particular health center. So it's been wildly successful. Uh, the second one is under construction and just on the interior, just about ready to open in South Oklahoma City. And, and each of these uh, senior wellness centers, they're interesting in that they have different um, management Gotcha. And so they, they address the community that they're in in slightly different ways. So it's not a cookie cutter. Each one's going to be slightly different and, and attuned to the needs of that community. But um, so that's down by Capitol Hill. And the third one has yet to be, the third has yet to be cited. So we're looking at something in Northeast Oklahoma City. Um, and, then, and then we'll start discussions on the fourth. Okay, sounds great. Well, the thing that we've realized, though, about them is that strategically, they being geographically located to really take advantage of the demographics. And if there's a, com a community dichotomy, they've really tried to address, address that, just like you've said with the partners that have come in. So uh, we can talk about who some of the partners have been, right? That's public information. Yeah, absolutely. Would you share that? I think that's really interesting information that's for people that have stepped up to do that. Um, so the, there's a partnership that was formed for the Northwest uh, Senior Center, and I've, the, na the name of the group escapes me right now, I don't, Healthy Futures. I believe, Healthy Futures, um, and um, uh, NorthCare is doing the one on the south side. Um, we're still looking for a partner on the east side. We're, I guess, in discussions with a couple different people on what that might look like. So, but, but it's really been different. You know, it's not like one group stepped up and said, we'll just handle it. Right, um, and that's kind of, you know, the, those are MAPS projects, and that's kind of the MAPS 
the way we do things. We build infrastructure and then we ask people to manage it. Yeah, sounds yeah. great. Well, I love the, the community involvement because, you know, if we'll all stay more involved, just like you guys are being involved today, not only uh, for access to have this information, but you're also making a difference in your community by being educated so that we can go out as, you know, as arm in arm as we go out to try to make our community uh, healthier uh, in many ways. So speaking of that again, Gary, let's roll back to you. And there is a specific health index uh, that has been generated. So as a business person, please tell me what that health index means. Okay. And if, and if I could kind of back up just a minute okay. and, and say a couple of things. A lot of this has to do with community leadership, and we have great leadership in our community. And we've got two examples of that here, too. Mary is on our City County Board of Health, and Dr. J. Don Harris down here at the front end as well. And that leadership is, is critical. And by the way, the, the governmental public health system in Oklahoma, which we're a part of, uh, consists of the, the state health department, which is in charge of the, of the small county health departments in the rural areas, and two independent health departments in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So we are independent. Uh, and we have our own independent board and independent uh, budget as well. And so uh, we're, we're completely separate. But, but what, this means, um, what this means to business, I think, in, in the index, first of all, what the index really consists of is gathering data, and it takes about four parts. And it takes our epidemiologist about six months working on this almost full time to put, to put together. And they get information not only about death rates and hospital records and things of that nature, but also social factors such as uh, maternal health or such as crime or poverty and income and things of that nature. And then they take all of that information and they put it together into a score. And, and the score uh, is, is uh, you have a score for every zip code in Oklahoma County. And so and we can really see then where we need to put a lot of our assets. As a matter of fact, the Northeast Health and Wellness Center is put uh, out just north of Remington Park. And the reason that we put that, that, uh, that campus there is because it had the most challenged health outcomes at that time. Glad to say, since our new report, that's improved and things are better. So now we have challenges in South Oklahoma City, and that's why we're putting a Southern Oak campus with a great number of partners that are going to come together to provide services in, in South Oklahoma City. And so we hope by all working together that the health outcomes will improve in that area as well. But as, as far as the, the business connection, um, and, and kind of Mary alluded to this, but we look at it three ways. It takes really three things to have a, a good quality of life in a city or a state for that matter. And that's, that's our community putting a, a priority and an emphasis on three things. Education certainly is key. Health and wellness is linked in. And then jobs in the economy. And all three of those things are interrelated. You cannot be successful unless you have all three, and you have all three uh, with a high priority of our community. And so really what it means for business is, if you don't have health and wellness and a healthy workforce, that's going to affect the bottom line, it's going to affect your insurance rates, and also it's going to affect your ability to attract and retain top flight talent and top flight uh, businesses in our community. And so it, it's extremely important and we've seen through some of the work that we've done with hospitals and partnerships with other groups that really uh, that doing partnerships and focusing on prevention and health and wellness and some of the things that public health can bring to the table will actually reduce costs significantly. And I, I'm, I'm talking about very significantly. And so that's going to impact our economy. It's going to be uh, more income going into people's pockets. Uh, more profitability for businesses. And I also say, you know, just finally this, Judy, uh, it's important for the business community to be involved because you are influential. You have a lot of employees, you know a lot of the policy makers, a lot of the, a lot of the folks that make decisions. And so for you talking to your elected representatives and talking to, to your neighbors and your colleagues, it's important to, to talk about how, how important health and wellness is and prevention and how it's really going to improve our quality of life here in Oklahoma City. And only business can do that. Now I could give you 
many examples of, of how business has taken the lead on initiatives along with philanthropy and really made a huge difference in our city and in our state. Oh, thank you very much. I, I, I really agree with the something that's often overlooked is when companies are coming to look at Oklahoma City, they're going to look at that workforce and a huge part of that is health and wellness. So critical that we continue to improve the score and this index so that we could get, where, where do you think, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that it's probably by big city, maybe by state, et cetera, et cetera, but where do we kind of fall in the pack nationally, would you say? Well, as a state, we're about, you know, and we're improving, but it's still not enough, 43rd. Okay. Uh, and well. so we're still in, you know, education, we have that challenge, and that's why we have to reprioritize okay. Uh, our efforts in those two in those two areas um, and as far as Oklahoma County we're kind of in the middle uh, in Oklahoma County of all the 77 counties we do have an urban population we have a lot of poverty and poverty is a big factor here as well okay. and that's where edu education uh, uh, poverty that's where jobs and the economy come in too because good paying jobs is going to lift people out of poverty they're going to have an opportunity to have health insurance and and make some healthier choices uh, in their lives. Well, you know, that benchmark, I mean, that really puts it in perspective. So we don't want to be 43rd. That's not how Oklahoma City operates. So all you guys, we, we got some work to do. So let's roll it back to Mary as we look at education and uh, ask her, what do you see in fu future opportunities as it relates to this overall wellness for Oklahoma City? So I know, I know education is going to be part of that answer. So let's All about it. the kiddos. Yep. And it starts with the kids. So what I'm, what I'm really proud of is that there are a lot of efforts being made. And I, Gary said that I, I serve on their board and I'm really proud to do so. And I have to just take a moment to say, if you all aren't aware of what the Oklahoma City County Health Department is doing, if this is the first time you've heard this story, I encourage you to take the time to go out and visit that wellness campus. We have a new one opening up. Um, in South Oklahoma City soon. This is an agency that doesn't operate like your typical government agency. This is a group of highly educated, very dedicated people who run it like a business. So I think you all can appreciate that and I, and I assure you that the, the gains that we've been made have been because of a lot of focus on what the real problems are and zeroing in on partnerships and efforts and programs that help solve these problems, we can make this better. And I also know that we can make things better for Oklahoma City public school children. We, we have plenty of issues, but working together and realizing that the schools can't do it alone, that we need the support of City County Health Department, we need the support of the business community, to help us in the gap, to fill the gaps that we have, we can make this better. But there are some wonderful things going on. City County Health Department has a health at school um, series of programming that's going in working with, with schools. There are caseworkers that are working in schools that are making a big difference. They'll do anything from health screenings to doing training on bullying. Um, which is a big problem with our kids. So there are a lot of efforts going in now. Teen pregnancy is another thing I have to point out. Um, Liz Eichmann is here, and Liz Eichmann has been a real leader in this effort to make sure that we are putting focus onto um, trying to prevent teen pregnancy. And the effort, the focus, has paid off. And we've seen actually a 29% decrease in teen births from 2013 to 2016, and that's because of focused efforts. So those are very good things. The Oklahoma City Public Schools has a wellness committee. City County Health Department has a member that's on that, but that is, that's a group of people that are focused all the time on nutrition and physical exercise and all of the issues pertaining to health in our schools. The Oklahoma City Public Schools Compact, of which the chamber is a member, the city of Oklahoma City is a member, the district of course, the foundation and United Way of Central Oklahoma are all working together and we have figured out in working with the district what are some key areas that 
this group can focus on with and leverage their relationships and when the very first initiative that we took on was reading and literacy so you'll see things around about read okc that's really just to pushing out to kids and to families how important it is for kids to be reading the second initiative that is more related to health is a focus on mental health issues within our schools and the Compact has worked with the State Department of Mental Health to do an assessment of our schools and to get a baseline of where we are in order to figure out where to best put resources to help these issues. And I'll tell you, some of the, the results are pretty staggering um, with our kids coming to school with trauma, coming to school with um, thoughts of suicide and having seen domestic violence in their homes, having a parent incarcerated, there are all these different levels that you look at and, and we've got to know where we are before we can fix it. So I, and I know City County Health Department will be part of, of figuring out what that solution's gonna be because we've got to get to the root causes of these problems and it, it is about nutrition, it is about physical exercise, but it's also about the mental well-being of our kids they can't come into the classroom having witnessed something horrible the night before and 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 we expect them to sit and pay attention to a math lesson it just doesn't work so lots of efforts underway but but like gary said we need the business community's help well and as as you talk about the compacts because we've we in business you know have uh, seen the the really healthy, positive outcomes that, you know, it's, it's one step at a time. It doesn't happen overnight because we're, we're changing lives, uh, you know, from the time they're five and six because that's where it has to happen, for it to happen for a lifetime. So are there, uh, I'll ask this to all three of you, is there an avenue through which people, uh, I think most of the people in the room wouldn't be here if they didn't care, uh, is there an av avenue of volunteerism that uh, could be, uh, these folks could call or, or find out about if they wanted to dedicate an hour a month or their business wanted to adopt something. What, what exists from that? Who, who'd like to take that question? Okay, Mary. <laughs> I, I thought it was a follow-up. I, I was hoping it was. <laughs> well, and I'll, I'll talk first about City County Health Department because if you're really interested in the, the health piece of it, the Wellness Now Coalition is made up of hundreds, you may even have a thousand now, volunteers that focus in these areas. So you can call Jackie, you can call Gary, there's stuff on Raise the website if you, want to, um, <laughs> if you want to take part that way. But if you, want to, if you want to really get your hands dirty and get into a school, um, the Read OKC initiative has a lot of opportunities available. We're expanding what we call our Reading Buddies program where we are looking for caring adults to volunteer an hour a week. And that's better than an hour a month. We need an hour a week. We can partner you and your employees with whatever school you want to be part of to go in. And there's Melody with the library system. She's another great partner. To go in and read with kids once a week. Um, and, and that, in and of itself, does help them increase and improve their reading scores as much as anything being a mentor for these kids is extraordinarily beneficial to their overall well-being the foundation also has a number of initiatives um, partners in action where we are matching community partners who want to adopt schools or do projects for schools it can be as simple as providing five hundred dollars in gift cards for teacher appreciation lunches to helping us put a basketball court at an elementary school. It really runs the gamut. So okckids.com is our website. So there you go. Mary Malone, you want to give them a phone number? 6045977. I mean, seriously, please write that down because Mary at okckids.com. Yeah, yeah <laughs> seriously. Uh, th this lady has done many things in our community over the years, but what she is doing now for the future of our community is, is just phenomenal, so thank you, Mary. Okay, so Steve, we're gonna roll back to you. 
uh, because now we're going to kind of talk about the city just a little bit. So the city's planning department is a strong partner in the effort to improve the health of our citizens. So can you give us one or two successful strategies that the city has implemented recently? Sure. You know, I think it's appropriate. I was th sitting here thinking that I'm sitting between Mary and Gary, <laughs> whose whose names oddly rhyme. <laughs> but uh, so that everyone that's in this room has been involved in Oklahoma City's renaissance over the last 20 years, and so you know that we're building a, a world-class city. And the two areas that the city of Oklahoma City has no real direct connection to is is the health and the education system. And so we're fortunate that we have uh, Gary and Mary working. Uh, really hard in those areas and, and I, I was telling Gary earlier that so prior to working for Mayor Holt I was actually Mayor Cornett's chief of staff as well and I think in the last eight years probably the person with whom I've had the most interactions is Gary Cox and, and, and Jackie Shawnee uh, which tells you a little bit about Mayor Cornett's priorities. Uh, Mayor Holt if you've read the papers you've, you've already seen that he's already said that education is a priority for him so I, I suspect that the same kind of passion that Mayor Cornette showed for the health and wellness in our community, uh, Mayor Holt is going to sh show for the education of our community. Having said all that, what was your question again? Okay. <laughs> well, we just wanted to know about some of the city, so the city uh, recent planning. initiatives. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, thanks to all the voters who passed not only the bond issue, but the uh, Better Streets, Safer City initiative, because those two things are going to enable us to really work on our, our roads and and in conjunction with the roads are sidewalks. And you all know that sidewalks have been a thing we've been doing for a while now, and, and we're gonna do a lot more of that. And all the infrastructure changes that we've made over the last 10 to 15 years have been kind of designed to get people outside and get people walking. And so um, the planning department now has a, a bike ped plan that's online. You can find that online at uh, okcity.gov or whatever, okc.gov. Um, and it, it's a comprehensive look at how we're going to move people throughout the city on, on bikes once we get all the roads fixed. <laughs> but um, so everything we've done, the, the, the park, the senior wellness centers, the streetcar, uh, the bike and the bike trails, the, the emphasis on, on putting sidewalks in neighborhoods, that's all designed, you know, with an intent. And that intent is to, to change the way that we react to our city. Uh, Mayor Cornette and the city council, uh, Councilman McAtee, they, they realized that we'd built a city, and you've heard Mayor Cornette say it before, that was designed for cars. And so the city we're building now is designed for people to get them outside. Uh, we're, gonna, we're working on our bus system to make that better. Streetcar will help people move. It seems counterintuitive to think of buses and streetcars as ways to get people outside and walking, but that's what they do. You know, they're designed to, to, to move you around without driving your car and parking it immediately in front of the building you're going to and then running inside. So those are some of the things that we're working on. And, 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 and the planning department has no shortage of ideas on, on what we can do to improve the city. Well, as a downtown resident, I mean, I, I walk everywhere. And uh, it just gets you out. And it's so fun in Oklahoma City because we know everybody. You know, so when you're walking on the street, you see your buds. You know, and so it's, it's just so fun. So it gets us out more. And as an, as an older adult, you know, it keeps you active. And that keeps you mentally active so that we can try to keep up with our grandkids. And isn't that some form of wellness, I'm thinking? I'm hoping it is. Um, so Steve, you're on such a good roll. I'm, I'm gonna ask you about, um, are there certain areas of the city that you see are challenging? Uh, is, is there an area right now that you guys are really putting uh, focus on because you know it needs some real help? Yeah, there, there, I mean, there's always parts of the city that, that need help. Um, right now, where there's a, a focus on Northeast Oklahoma City, um, we, and there's some positive traction going on there. Uh, the Oklahoma City Clinic located on Northeast 23rd Street. And it's our hope that that spurs further economic development along that corridor. Um, there's an interesting, we're, right now we're in a pilot pro project that was brought to us by Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti. Um, and he, he, he came to Oklahoma City, Louisville, and South Bend, Indiana, largely in part because of the leadership in, this, in those communities. Um, but the, what they're trying to do is there, there are state and federal designated opportunity zones throughout the city, and I think we have 19 all told. And there's a part of the new tax plan, there's a provision that would allow uh, investors to invest what would be capital gains into a fund that could only be spent in these opportunity zones. And, and so that it presents a lot of intriguing uh, possibilities that they still haven't written the rules at Treasury, but um, Again, Mayor Holt was out in Los Angeles recently with Mayor Garcetti and, and the mayors of Louisville and, and South Bend, Indiana, 
And basically we're, what we're doing is putting together an, like an investor prospectus for these opportunity zones. Now, the, and, and they're in areas where you would anticipate they would be. It also includes a large part of the uh, downtown central business district and the innovation district. And so that's, you know, that's another area where, where there's a lot of interest in, in uh, creating something of value. Well, that's really good. The important thing is that there are target areas. And we are looking at, uh, you know, what are the best ways to make those continue to get better yeah. one, one step know, at a time. On, on, a, on a micro level, um, the planning department has the Strong Neighborhoods Initiative. Uh -huh. And that goes into specifically into, they, you know, they're working usually two neighborhoods at a time and they're troubled and, and on, the, on the edge of, you know, going into the wrong direction. And so they go in in a holistic manner and, and tie the, the schools to the neighborhoods, to the parks, to the home ownership groups. And and try to elevate that neighborhood and, and what's possible within the neighborhood. So that's, that's been a really successful program. Well, it's bringing stakeholders together. Right. You know, once, once everybody gets around a table and talks about it, it's fun, funny to see how quickly little problems seem to disappear, you know, if we just talk to each other. So I, I think that you all have, have heard a lot of wonderful things about the initiative and what's going on and all the hard work that's gone into it. We'd like to open it up for questions. So are there uh, questions in the audience that we might want to field? Yes, Joe. County um, Health Department. Um, it is an um, epidemic that affects all of us as businesses, um, but affects many of us as family members and of friends. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about what we're doing in the city and in the county to fight this epidemic? Want to take that, Gary? Sure. Well, well, uh, excellent question. And it is. It, it's the cause. If you look at the data, the numbers are skyrocketing, and so it affects everybody. You know, it's it, you, you know everybody has a family member or a friend or someone that's been impacted by this in all all levels of folks, uh, the professional ranks, and and all levels. So one of the things that we're doing. There's a lot of work that's been going on. You know, Commissioner Vaughn's uh, been very much involved in this, and a lot of others have, Clay Bennett and others, but it's on criminal justice reform uh, and a lot of uh, an, uh, an energy around that issue about how do you get folks, not as many folks in jail, because the folks that are going to, to, uh, to be incarcerated are generally about 75% of them either have a mental health issue or a substance abuse issue or an alcohol issue. And so they're, they're not violent. They're, they're, uh, a lot of them are uh, high need, <clears throat> uh, low violent uh, uh, type of an offenders. And so the question is, how do you get them out of that system, get them into a system where they can get some help? Um, because they're, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not criminals. And so, so one effort to do that, and we worked with Steve and, and uh, Mayor Cornette and now Mayor Holt, and we were invited to apply for a Bloomberg grant uh, from Bloomberg Philanthropies, and we made the first cut. We're one of the 35 cities that, that have gotten that uh, grant. We've been able to do a lot of work. And then we're still going for a grand prize of $5 million, by the way, that'll be announced in October uh, by Mayor Bloomberg. But basically what, what it involves is a couple of things. One is a diversion program how do you get these low-risk, high-need individuals out of that system and into some help, uh, number one. And we're, what we're using is a proven method of using community health workers to link them to community resources. We know that works because we've got evidence that shows that it works right here in Oklahoma City. The second thing is that everybody is siloed. All the information systems tend to be siloed. Many of them are paper. They're not electronic. And so trying to integrate all of those information systems, not only with, with the people that, that affect the f folks that are in the criminal justice system, but the so social service agencies and others that, that are affecting those lives. Pull all that data together so that you can have a snapshot or, or a dashboard of, of, of a, a total picture of that person, their family, their work, uh, their job, and how you might be able to help them keep their job, keep their kids, keep their families together, get them back into the community where they're productive. Uh, and so uh, that's one of the things we're doing. Then the second part of that is trying to work with a philanthropic community to say, okay, this is a diversion of the folks that are already there. 
But how about the kids of those families? Because we know a large number of those kids in those criminally unjust, uh, justice involved folks are going to end up in the criminal justice system themselves. How do you break that cycle? And so try to work with schools and work with others in a preventive measure to try to get them out of that cycle yeah, so that they can grow up and be healthy. Does that get you get your question answered, Joe? Okay, very good. Other folks in the room that might have a specific question, they've done such a great job of uh, disseminating information for us today, but any other burning questions over here? We have one. Hi, I was really stunned by the uh, the number, the Alzheimer's number. Uh, it's kind of an outlier. Any explanation for that? Uh, good question. Uh, it's a national trend, uh, and with the graying of America, uh, and so it is a national trend, and it's one that the evidence isn't real clear on how you how you help that. What we know about is, and we're working with my heart and others, is that. If you can keep people healthy, their, 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 their cardiovascular, if you can keep them active and healthy, then that's going to be a less, uh, you're going to be able to maybe delay that, the onset of Alzheimer's or, or dementia or others. And so that's something that we're still working, working on looking at. It's quite a challenge because there's not a great deal of data on how you successfully uh, turn that number around. Other questions? I uh, just had a general question here. How does the undocumented individuals affect your health score? And the second part of it is how are we addressing those individuals in terms of our health stand from a health standpoint as well? Okay, so you want to start with undocumented. Okay, who, who wants to, to take that one? Who'd be most we both can answer. Okay, that sure. sounds great. Right. Do you want to go no, first? Go ahead. More than 50%, 54%, in fact, of the students in Oklahoma City Public Schools are Hispanic. That, that does not mean they're all undocumented, but there's about, about a third of those are coming to school where English is not their first language. And our view, and this is the, the model of public education, is we take and welcome and embrace all children that come through our doors and it is our job to take care of them and to educate them so what that does put a, a an added burden on our school system because we've got to be able to address the needs of children as they're learning english but i'm really proud to say that we don't turn children away we welcome all children and we've had some great success stories of bilingual paraprofessionals that are working with our kids. The foundation has started a program that is putting those bilingual paraprofessionals through college to help them become certified teachers. So they'll then be bilingual teachers working in our classrooms because that makes all the difference. We're also helping our staff members at Oklahoma City Public Schools who want to learn Spanish. And this isn't about saying we're going to be teaching in Spanish. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you, I get, I get hate mail about some of the programs we're running, hate mail saying, why are you helping these kids? And it's, it's appalling to me, honestly. Um, I'm not in media anymore, so I can just totally give my opinion here. It's, <laughs> it's, it's appalling to me that we don't embrace these children and realize what a gift it is to be growing bilingual children and multilingual children. This helps us in the global economy, but we have to admit the fact that we've got to put support systems around it. And, and I'll throw it to Gary because I, I, his philosophy is the same yeah. about how they treat health. Well, well yes, yeah, so it's very similar. In, in public health, we don't turn anybody away. You know, uh, anybody that comes to us for services, we're going to provide them. If they can't afford them, uh, we'll provide them for free. Uh, and so uh, that's that's our philosophy, um, and uh, we think it's important to to really improve the health of everyone that lives in Oklahoma City and Oklahoma County. Um, and and also the health is disproportionate, particularly right now. The challenge is in in South Oklahoma City, and then secondarily in Northeast Oklahoma City. If you look at those two 
uh, those two areas of the city in the zip codes there there's an 18 year difference in lifespan between those most challenged and and the better zip codes and I mean you know 18 years just uh, because a child was born in a certain location that they're gonna, they may live 18 years less life than maybe some of us that live in in uh, more uh, more affluent or areas where there's more access to services is just simply not acceptable and we've got to really think about as a community how we can begin to intervene and put more resources and we're trying to do that and I know many others are as well it's something we got to work on I'd like to if I could tag team basically yeah, on this, that'd on be this great. general premise um, obviously mayor Holt when he campaigned he campaigned on a, on a platform of uh, diversity and, and and honoring our diversity and embracing it and utilizing it because it's a it's a powerful engine for our community and I want to one thing that you know there's some substantial things you can do in that and then there's some symbolic things and and I'd like to if you've not been to the mayor's conference room uh, his conference room used to have pictures of all of Oklahoma City's past mayors and so you can imagine what that looked like so he's <laughs> took those all down and he's replaced it with pictures of young people between about the ages of six, seven, eight, nine years old um, that are demographically representative of their age group in Oklahoma City. And that, that picture is 60% non-Caucasian. So we have to know that our, we live in a, a surprisingly diverse community with a lot of uh, rich culture that we can utilize to the benefit of everybody in this community. And um, if you're ever at City Hall, I, I welcome you to come by and, and, and just take a look at, in that in that conference room and what he tells people is two things one he wants everyone to know these are the these are the, the rules we make today affect these kids tomorrow and two this is what our city's going to look like in in 10 years less than 10 years so um i just wanted i just wanted to share that it's a symbolic gesture but um i've seen i've seen on a first-hand basis when i've toured children through that room that it's a significant gesture so well i think it is significant steve and um uh, you know, David is so youthful anyway, his children are young, and it's just really good to see that vibrancy. I think we're so lucky to have him as our mayor in Oklahoma City. We've had such a legacy of phenomenal mayors within our community, and you can see what that's resulted in, in the positive outcomes that we're experiencing now. Uh, and soon one of those is to be the streetcar that I know all of you all are dodging right now. So, uh, <laughs> we, we uh, you know, I'm sure there's other questions and our uh, panel here would be more than happy to answer them if you'd like to address them directly to them. But in order to be respectful of your time, first I'd like to, rep to really appreciate Gary and Steve and Mary. If you all give them a <laughs> great applause. Thank you. <laughs> So as we uh, have spent this time answer answering questions, uh, some came up that were a little off the radar screen that we hadn't thought of in addressing questions for you all, and we're certainly appreciative of all you all thinking through those. And I'm sure that some of the questions that were asked will be given more thought because we need better answers for them. So we want to thank you for all of your participation and discussion today. And um, I'd like to again thank our signature sponsor, Metro Technology Centers. Uh, for today's participation in the event because without these signature sponsors guys we wouldn't be able to have this wonderful access to to so many strong folks oh uh, wait there's more so we have our next forum coming up and it's going to be on August 15th and we're going to explore what's new and hot in art foods and the music scenes I don't know if that includes salsa margaritas but certainly it's going to include some great, great, wonderful food that we're all experiencing across Oklahoma City. We're going to all need to be on a diet. But, you know, there's two days a week that you get to not do that. Your work days, you've got to kind of be focused. But when you're not working, those calories don't count. I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. So I just want to thank all of you all for attending today. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good job, huh? Good job, Mary.